If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we'll do first in order to solve the question is to draw a picture of these two trains as they approach each other. So here we have a train that we have labeled the source, and we're going to assume that that train is the one that's producing a whistle or a sound. The other train we've labeled the observer and have colored in red. Now we know that when two objects are moving relative to each other, then the Doppler effect is going to be at play. And we know the Doppler effect obeys the following equation. Now in this equation, we have F0, which would be the frequency of sound observed. So that would be for the red train. Fs is going to be the frequency of sound emitted by the source, or the orange train. V is the speed of sound, which was given to us in the question as 343. And then VO is the speed of the observer, VS is the speed of the source. Now, in order to use the Doppler effect equation, we have to follow certain sign conventions. So let's take a look at those. At this point in the video, you want to pause and just make sure you read over the four sign conventions as they apply to this situation. We can see from our diagram that the source and the observer are moving towards each other. And so if we read the first convention, we see that we're going to use a positive speed is substituted for the V0 when the observer is moving towards the source. And that's what's going on here. So we know that the speed of the observer will have a positive value. And similarly, a positive value for the speed of the source, Vs, is going to be used again when the source is moving towards the observer. So in fact, when we plug in for Vs, we're going to use a positive value just like for V0. Part A of the question is asking what frequency is heard on the other train. The other train is going to be the observer train. And so what we're trying to calculate is F0. We simply have to plug in all the known values. Fs, again, is the frequency of the source, which is 500 hertz. V is the speed of sound, which is given to us as 343 meters per second. The speed of the observer is going to be 28 meters per second. We're going to use a positive 28. We'll plug in the speed of sound again, and we have minus the speed of the source, which is also moving at 28 meters per second. So we can pick up our calculators and compute this. And when we do so, we should get approximately 589 hertz. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now in part B, we're again being asked to calculate the frequency heard on the observer train, but this time there is a wind blowing 31 meters per second towards the whistle. So we could maybe draw a couple of arrows to indicate the direction of the wind. Notice that the wind is flowing towards the whistle or towards the source of the sound. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to essentially slow down the speed of the sound that's coming off the source train. Remember the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, but if we have wind blowing against that speed of sound, then we're going to have to slow down the sound and therefore subtract 31 meters per second. So all we have to do is adjust the value for V, and we can see that that comes out to 312 meters per second, but otherwise we're just going to go ahead and plug back into the equation using the same values except for the speed of sound, which again has been slowed down by the wind blowing against the source of that sound. And we should get roughly 599 hertz for the frequency of sound observed by the red train. Now on to part C, and this time the wind direction is going to be reversed. So now the wind is blowing to the right. And because the wind is blowing in the same direction as the direction the sound is moving, that means the speed of sound is actually going to increase. So we can take the regular speed of sound in still air, and this time we're going to add 31 meters per second onto that value. And we're going to get 374 meters per second. So this will be the speed of sound. Notice that it's faster than the ordinary speed of sound, again, because the wind is sort of pushing the sound along as it travels towards the observer. We'll plug in all the values. And that turns out to give us a frequency of approximately 581 hertz, the correct answer to part C. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. You can send your own question into the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.